Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear, and other random stuff. This is an Apple Quick Take 200 camera, Apple's third attempt to enter the digital photography market. It's from 1996, or 97, depending on who you ask, and a full 10 years before Steve Jobs announced iPhone. Today, Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. In this video, I'm going to try to resist the temptation to compare the performance of an old camera against new cameras from today. Okay, okay, I can't resist. Just this once. Here goes. The picture quality from a quick take camera is so deficient as to be laughable and painful at the same time. Okay, now that that's out of my system, I can continue. For 1996, the QuickTake 200 was easy to use, produced decent pictures, and was inexpensive enough to place digital photography within the reach of the average non-professional camera user. I'm going to talk about the QuickTake 200 in the following sequence. The Apple QuickTake 200 was almost identical to the Fujifilm DS7 and DS8 on which it was based. The Apple version used Fujifilm's optics and electronics, Kodak's sensor, but their own firmware. Thus, it had a personality of its own. The camera was aimed at the consumer market and was priced at $600 in 1996, which in 2022 would be about the equivalent of $1,000. That seems like a lot, and it was, but bear with me. According to Time Magazine from October 2010, the Quick Take was among the top 100 greatest and most influential gadgets. Let's see why. Digital photography was pioneered by Kodak in 1975 by an engineer named Stephen Sasson and for a long time it remained purely experimental. QuickTake was nowhere near the first digital camera for consumers. DICAM Model 1 came out in 1990, but the image quality was really poor, and the price was outrageous. By the time Apple entered the market, it was possible to produce much better for less. The QuickTake 200 replaced Apple's earlier models, the QuickTake 100 and QuickTake 150, and was quite an improvement. Back in 1996, photography was a totally different thing than it is today. First, the vast majority of people took pictures with mechanical cameras using a strip of plastic film, which was chemically treated and processed to produce pictures. That's why photography was an expensive hobby in those days. Second, no one had a camera on their cell phone. It wasn't on the market yet. That wouldn't happen until 1999 with Kyocera's VP210. Cell phones were mostly phones. Third, almost no one used a digital camera. They were too expensive for most consumers, and the pictures were grainy and didn't come close to rivaling film photography. By the 1990s, digital sensors had evolved and their price had dropped significantly. Manufacturers were beginning to see this as a viable market, and the sales of digital cameras literally exploded, completely wiping out the chemical photography market taking the Eastman Kodak Company and the Polaroid Corporation with it. All quick take cameras have a sensor that produces images in 24-bit color with a maximum of 640 pixels horizontally and 480 pixels vertically. In today's terms, that works out to 0.3 megapixels. The Quick Take 200 has two picture capture modes, a regular mode and a fine mode. More on that later. Unlike the earlier Quick Takes, the Quick Take 200 has a 1.8 inch color LCD screen and if you're lucky enough to find one, an optical viewfinder as well. Its 5.7 millimeter lens has two apertures, one for low 
and one for high brightness. It doesn't have what we think of as autofocus. Rather, the lens doesn't focus on anything particularly well, but is adequate in a certain range. Close up. Portrait. And far. The camera lacks an electronic flash for night photography and has no provision for one. Quick Take 200 cannot take pictures without a memory card. This was likely because in 1996, memory was so expensive, Apple wanted to reduce the cost of the camera. A 2 megabyte smart media card holds roughly 20 fine pictures or 40 regular pictures. A 4 megabyte smart media card holds roughly twice as many. Here is a smart media card. It's physically huge compared to today's SD cards. But SD wouldn't come out until 1999, and microSD wouldn't come out until 2005. QuickTake did not have USB connectivity to connect to a computer. USB 1.0 wouldn't come out until early 1996 and wasn't widespread. Apple's standard at the time was a serial protocol called RS-232C. Most Apple Macintosh, Power Macintosh, and PowerBook computers were equipped with these ports. The camera was powered by four AA alkaline batteries or an optional external power adapter. The camera has a healthy appetite for batteries and will devour a set quickly. Let's compare image quality so you can get a sense of what quick take pictures actually look like. Here's a picture taken with a modern camera, though you're seeing it scaled to 720 because this video isn't HD. Here's the same picture as it would look in Quick Take's fine mode. And now, in regular mode. Yeah. Though Apple is known for designing and perfecting the human-machine interface and experience, I think they must have been limited by Fujifilm's hardware, because operating this camera is not as straightforward as it should be. The on-off switch is located next to the LCD display. To adjust the brightness of the LCD, there's a thumb wheel on the bottom. The contrast of the display cannot be adjusted. The mode of the camera is controlled by the mode dial on the top, and everything is controlled with this knob. Forget about screen menus because there aren't any. There are modes for self-timer, regular and fine resolution pictures, playing back and uploading, and that's it. There are no movie modes. The memory card goes under this door. The external power, composite video, and RS-232 are under this rubber flap. The camera is held together with five Phillips head screws. Removing them allows the camera to be opened like a book. Here are the chips inside. It's a story of Motorola, Sony, Fujitsu, and others, with some Fuji chips thrown in too. I looked for specs on these chips and found very little information. This is the fuse that can be blown if the external power supply is plugged in with the camera switched on. Unless you want to replace a surface mount device, don't do it. Make sure the power is off before plugging in the AC adapter. Here's where the quick take shines, and that is in the user experience of actually taking a picture. Turn the camera on. Choose fine or regular mode with the selector. 
Choose the focus range, set it to the appropriate distance. If it's very bright, choose the smaller lens aperture. Press the shutter release. Surprisingly, there's almost no latency, that is, a delay between the time you push the shutter release to the time the picture is recorded. However, viewing the pictures is not as pleasant. It takes about five seconds to retrieve and draw each image to the screen. And there you have it, a digital picture. What will they think of next? I may set up one of my mini Macintoshes with QuickTake 200 software and do a video on downloading the images to the computer. But I'll save that for another video if there is interest. Let me know in the comments section below. I will leave some resources in the description in case you're interested in learning more. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to Mr. Brown's Basement for more interesting and unusual videos.